It's a sad indictment of our society that across the country, paramedics work with a target on their backs. Ambushed, robbed, and often violently assaulted, and even shot, their commitment to saving lives offers no protection. In 2016, in a desperate bid to protect their frontline medics, the Western Cape declared 11 hotspots as so-called red zones, areas paramedics couldn't enter without a police escort. In December last year, our team joined a crew of medics on a busy Friday night in Cape Town's most crime-ridden communities and headed into the dreaded red zones. Here's Erin. Late night revelry in one of Cape Town's most crime-ridden areas, a regular destination for paramedics on night shift. Alcohol and drugs fuel an atmosphere that can turn at any moment, making this place and others like it hostile terrain for people simply trying to do their jobs. Called upon to save lives in one of the most violent and unpredictable places in the country, they work under the watchful eye of the police. This is a red zone. It's just before Christmas, the height of Cape Town's tourist season, notoriously busy for its emergency services. As day turns to night, paramedics at one of the city's medical emergency centers prepare to go on shift. They'll see a side to Cape Town many visiting the city couldn't possibly imagine, an environment in which their dedication to those in need doesn't spare them the attention of violent criminals. When it comes to saving lives, no area is off limits for emergency services, not even the city's red zones. The paramedic's presence on the front lines over the festive season is more important than ever. There are 11 so-called red zones around Cape Town. Their exact locations aren't publicized, but they're deemed too dangerous for paramedics to operate in without additional support. That means going in with a police escort, a frustrating process that often slows them down. We have a long night ahead of us, bra. Yeah. Are you ready? ready? I'm ready. You ready? Yes, I am ready. We're joining paramedics Ruduan Fredericks and Vui Sanani Oyo in Ambulance 116. Within minutes, they get a priority one call out. A 16-year-old boy has been shot in the leg. 116 control. He lives in a red zone. they will have to make a crucial stop. It's an obvious emergency, but the stopover at a police station to arrange backup eats away at the time. It's laborious and frustrating, but a sign of just how seriously the emergency services view the red zones and how conditions within them have deteriorated. You have the information in front of you, know what's going on, what's happening at that address, that you can't do anything. You are trained, you have all the resources with you to save somebody's life. But because of we have to get the escort and the waiting periods, it is sometimes too late when we get there. Fortunately, this time it's taken a matter of seconds, but we're told it can sometimes take up to three hours to get back up. In the growing darkness of this volatile area, the paramedics navigate the streets in search of their patient. So further down, we are entering the red zone at the moment. Okay, we are at the scene. None. My neighbor took him to the hospital. We apologize for taking very long, eh? We understand. Yeah, because we have to via police for safety issues. When patients are taken to hospital in a private vehicle, paramedics are often only informed after arriving at the scene. You're going to stand down. Working in these conditions takes a toll. Between call-outs, music provides Ridwan a much-needed outlet, a moment to forget the chaos that surrounds him. It gives that atmosphere of tranquility at the workplace, in the office, 
or in the ambulance or in the response vehicle. But these moments are all too brief as the ambulance radio shatters whatever tranquility he's able to find. Western Cape Emergency Medical Services respond to about 750,000 calls a year. Over the festive season alone, they receive around 65,000. Many of their patients are victims of violent crime in the notorious red zones. The red zone at times becomes a no-go area because sometimes these red zones get so volatile that even subs cannot escort us into the area. When they do make it in, they need to be vigilant at all times. It's just not easy when you're in those areas. It's not easy, especially when it's dark and there's slow shading. So it's more dangerous. It's not long before there's another call out to another red zone. Law enforcement is available. Is for us. So we would take the first escort available to assist us. There's somebody that stabbed in his neck. The stab wound needs stitches, but the patient refuses to be taken to hospital. We felt like anything can happen at any time because they are all drunk. Luckily today, there's no shooting. Unfortunately, with the job comes danger. In the last couple of years, it picked up. Victor Labuskachny has been a paramedic for 26 years and has seen it all. Is it just assault? Despite having a police escort, he's been attacked in red zones twice. As I approached the stop street, I saw one guy passing in front of the ambulance. He just turned around, he pulled his weapon, and he fired a shot at the ambulance. So uh, I got shot at that day. Uh, I was hit in my chest, uh, fractured two ribs, uh, I was bruised. And then on the other incident, a uh, guy stabbed me from the back. And uh, yeah, luckily, I'm still here. <laughs> Victor made a full physical recovery after the attacks, but they took a mental toll. After the whole shooting incident, I was awful quite a bit, but I just felt I needed to get back into the area. I needed to face my demons again. Not all paramedics are able to bounce back. In 2023 alone, there were over 40 attacks on paramedics in the Western Cape often leaving them with post-traumatic stress or PTSD. In terms of absenteeism, it's a huge problem. It is anything from anxiety to PTSD and anything from short absenteeism, like a couple of days off to months or years that the practitioners are not able to come back to work. The province's director of emergency medical services, Craig Wiley, says the safety of paramedics is essential. That's why permanent red zones were declared in the province in 2016. We will always go, the response might be delayed. If an area does become volatile, we will declare that as a temporary red zone, which basically means is watch out for a short time. And from what I understand, there's some areas where even the police are afraid to go in. That's not always the case, but there are cases of unrest, like we saw in a recent taxi violence where an ambulance was actually burned on the N2, where the police aren't happy to go into an area, and that we will call no-go zones. Danger lurks on almost every call-out. Sometimes the biggest threat comes from communities frustrated by the long waits. A vicious circle. People in green or any ambulance service, we need to help. We're not there for anything else. If it's your mother, your baby, your brother, and you have to wait for ambulance for three hours because we have to stand by the police station, it's not our fault. 
And yet, despite the challenges and almost constant threat to their safety, for the paramedics, this is a calling. I love this job. There's not a single day that I feel like, no, I don't want to be at work, I don't want to go to work. I'm always looking forward to be out there and assist and help people. A priority call comes through. It's urgent, time to move. Police are already on the scene for this case, so Rudawan and Ruiz Anani can head straight there. A man has been viciously assaulted and is in a critical condition. From what we understand, the patient being treated right now in the ambulance was assaulted a little bit further down this road. There are pools of his blood here, and you can see the drag marks leading up to the car where currently he's fighting for his life. See, I take, I take it down. Give me another 18 minutes. <laughs> The man was left for dead in the middle of the street. He has a collapsed lung, multiple lacerations, and a possible brain injury. The paramedics perform a chest decompression, a life-saving procedure. Rudawan says a lot has changed for emergency services staff in recent years. The answer is in the community. The community leaders, they have to address this with the elements within their community. It's really people in the communities that suffers that must pay the ultimate price because of elements that lives in the next street. It's a sad reality that would discourage people less committed to their cause. And in the moments when that reality gets too much, Rudawan has his music. After shift and a difficult shift, I immerse myself in music. Music is universal language. Music brings out emotions that you can't even say in words. When his shift is over, Rudawan often plays his trombone the images of the night before fading away. The sun rising signals the end of the team's 12-hour shift. New teams will take over for the daylight hours with 140 ambulances on call across the province. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access carte blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.